Sometimes when you do a year in review conversation, it takes a while to actually stop and think and look back and go, yeah, what were the big issues of the year before? Here we are in December, and then you look back to January and you're scratching and you go, well, what was big in January? And then you go back and you read your, your old columns and you go, oh yeah, that thing. I, I totally forgot about all that. Yeah, huge story. Not happening anymore right now, but yeah, funny when it happened. No, that's not what's going on in 2019. Because when you think about the stories that are big right now, well, some of them were big back then in January as well. That's a very interesting thing about 2019. The top public policy stories, the top politics stories, were constant throughout the year, and they haven't even gone away. Let's talk about the first one, the China file. It wasn't the beginning of 2019, it was the very end of 2018 in December. 2018 when we arrested Huawei CFO Meng Wanzhou at the behest of the United States. Ten days later, they detained Michael Kovrig and Michael Spavor, who are still languishing away in that jail cell. We're told that they're going to move towards a more formal process now in the court system, and that sounds initially like it's good for them, but it could not be good based on the way that the Chinese justice system is not arm's length from government. It is not a case of Lady Justice being blind, and this could end up being even worse for them as they proceed along here. Then we watched China ban a number of our products, we've watched their ambassadors say really incendiary things to us, and we've just continued to take it and do little in response. China said, if you ban Huawei, there's going to be repercussions for you. I think this is such a bizarre thing to say. It's supposedly a private company in China. Why does the government care so much about it? I mean, Canada does have various different trade ambassadors and envoys and consultants who work in the Canadian government and help Canadian firms get contracts abroad, so they would, of course, prefer that Canadian companies do well in other countries. But you don't have Prime Minister Justin Trudeau uh, standing up for entire companies, threatening countries and threatening others over the care for one company. You've got to wonder, what is it about Huawei that they want it so much into our 5G grid system? And why can't Justin Trudeau just say those two simple words, ban it? It's not that hard. Moving on to our next story that was a top story all throughout 2019. I realized I, I slipped up a few seconds ago and I said, oh, it's not like Justin Trudeau is willing to risk everything for one single Canadian corporation. Uh-oh. Yes, he was. Lab scam, SNC-Lavalin story. That was huge pretty much all throughout 2019. It had a few quiet moments, but it really ramped up at different times. Back in February, Justin Trudeau, well, he said the story is false as reported. Fake news didn't happen. The allegations that he improperly pressured the justice minister into offering this deferred prosecution agreement for SNC-Lavalin so they could pretty much walk from facing uh, these, these criminal charges, criminal prosecution, and being found guilty, meaning they would be barred from federal contracts for a number of years. They really didn't want that at all. Justin Trudeau said it's all about the jobs, and later reporting found out no, that they're not at risk of taking 5,000 jobs out of this country. The CEO himself had said that wasn't the case. And Trudeau really lost a lot of political capital there. A lot of accusations that he was a fake feminist for his treatment of Jody Wilson-Raybould and Jane Philpott. A lot of people saying, is this just like the, the liberal old guard and the sponsorship scandal stuff, way too close to a Quebec company where it seemed like you know, there's sometimes jokes like Bombardier, which gets a, a lot of government handouts. You kind of joke and you say it's like Bombardier is a, is a branch of the Canadian government. It's like SNC-Lavalin is a branch of the Canadian government. But then when you look at LabScam and you think, well, it's almost more like the Canadian government is a branch of SNC-Lavalin when you look at the connections there and who it seems to be the one calling the shots and who's doing who's bidding. Trudeau, almost willing to risk everything with his, with his political career to do their bidding. The other third story, top story of the year, this one, it wasn't big throughout the year. It was big for a brief period of time, but it's something that is going to stick in people's imaginations. This is a story you're not going to forget, which is the blackface photos emerging. And it was just so, so rich and so ironic that a man who had spent his entire tenure basically tisk tisking this country for being a country of ill intent and rooted in racism and intolerance and so forth, pointing a finger at so many people in this good country who I would say are fair-minded and reasonable people, Trudeau points the finger at all of those people. Were they exposed as people who had a near decade-long history of putting in blackface, not when they were 12 years old or 17 years old, when whatever people make mistakes, but when he was in his 20s, when he was 
an adult male and already facing some scrutiny in the limelight. Now he was the one, Justin Trudeau, was the one who donned the blackface on well, so many occasions that he could not actually remember how many times he had done it. Well, he somewhat persevered there on election day being re-elected, at least with a minority. It shows that I guess he benefits from a, from a sort of double standard that few other people would benefit from, but that's a story that, uh, well, people are not going to forget. Some big top stories there in 2019. What a year.